Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Uh, good evening to our um, friends on online that follow us through the internet. It's uh, always uh, nice to see you all here. Um, tonight is our English lecture. We do this twice a, uh, a month, I guess. Um, and we are going to to talk and and share here some reflections, some um, some thoughts. If anybody needs uh, translators, we have the the headphones out there. Se alguém precisar do, de tradução, nós temos os, os headphones ali na, na biblioteca, é, ali na porta. Se é só só levantar a mão, eles trazem aqui para para vocês, ok? So tonight we're going to share some thoughts. Some um, I was I was remembering here. I was sitting down there and I was watching this sign. Um, it's going to be our fifteenth anniversary. Of, of this house, this center. I remember the first time we, uh, my husband and I came here, we, uh, they were celebrating the eighth anniversary, so time flies. And uh, it's, um, it's been a, a, a wonderful journey. I've learned, I have so much to be grateful for, for this house, for the things that we, we've done here together, for the lessons, for all the, the friends, mainly, people that we met through, that I don't think we met, but we, it's been like a, um, a re-encountering. I mean, it's just like seeing them, these old friends that we, um, maybe we hadn't seen each other before, but we, we met them here. So it's been a good journey. And uh, through this, we, some of these lessons that we've learned, and one thing that's interesting uh, on the doctrine is it doesn't ask you for immediate, immediate um, effect in our lives. It, it asks us for persistence, it asks us for continuous work. It asks, it asks us for continuous um, trying, right? If we, if we read the, the, the book of, uh, of spirits, it's the good spiritist is the one who tries his best to, to do good, to, to work on himself, to become better. It's not the one who is already good. And sometimes, many times, we, we hear people that says, well, but you go to the center every week, every, every Sunday, every, every Wednesday, every day, and you're still doing this? Have you ever heard this question? Yes, we're still doing this. We're still sometimes failing, which is perfectly OK. But in the process of noticing it, in the process of working on ourselves, in the process of knowing, knowing ourselves better, sometimes changes occur very slowly. And many times we don't realize it. But when we look back seven years ago, eight years ago, thank you. Thank you. Obrigada, Marcin. When we look back seven years, we see some differences in things, especially in our age. <laughs> um, gray hair. Um, but many times we see ourselves more patient. We see ourselves more tolerant. We see ourselves accepting things that seven years ago we thought it was so bad. And now we just look at it and we see <coughs> Just life happening as it is. Prejudice changes a lot. We start accepting ourselves and accepting others in a way that it's not just, of course, age helps, but going through life and going through time, not taking advantage of the lessons 
um, doesn't make us better. We can see a lot of people that are that got into a very um, good age, and they're still fighting. They're still trying to. Um, they still they still see the world in their own way. And today we're going to talk about this ability, this response ability. We talk about it here all the time. Responsibility, responsibility. We are responsible for, for us, for what happened to us, for our thoughts, for what's going on in our lives. But um, one thing that I learned here is this very light weight, very um, harmonious way of seeing life in this ability to respond. It's not a heavy thing that it's like we have to do something. It is the right thing to do. No, we learn through our lives, through our actions, through our um, through the consequences of what we see. That our ability to respond increases a lot with our experience, right? If you think about your your days when um, of school, homework was the main the main responsibility, right? Making it, um, doing it at the right time, delivering it at the right time. The teacher should have it, and we would have to do the best that we could. And the grades were done based on our ability to respond. No. The ones who did better had put some more work, had put some more research, had put some more paperwork. And we, um, we start seeing these consequences through our grades in life, too. Things start happening to us in, a, in ways that um, it's not just good or bad. We say, oh, you do good, and good things will happen to you. Not always. It's not, it's not the way it works. Life doesn't work like that. For us to increase our ability, it's like a muscle. We need some resistance, no? Can you grow your muscles just by standing, doing nothing? We need some weight. We need some resistance. We need something that pull us to make us stronger. And the same thing is responsibility. It's not going to grow if it doesn't have some resistance. Resistance comes to us in many different ways. It comes through tendencies that we bring from past lives. It comes from things that we do in this life, from choices that we make every day. It doesn't, I mean, there's no way for us to feel good after we eat 10 pounds of chocolate. There's no way for us to be good, to feel good, if we don't do our exercise, if we don't take care of ourselves, if don't, we don't take care of our stress levels, if we don't know ourselves well enough. If we go through life, it's very easy to go through days that you just go, go to work, come back, and don't even think about it. How many days we do that? How many things we do? How many times, weeks, years, we go through life not questioning ourselves, not questioning our choices, not questioning what's going on with us? Then it gets to a point, especially when, when these uh, milestones in our lives happen. For us, it's like when we have kids, when we have young kids, it's kindergarten. They leave the house. We have four hours for ourselves, moms mainly. Then all of a sudden, they are in middle school. They're driving. High school, they're gone. Milestones. Then we are alone uh, by ourselves at home. The house becomes too big. Our lives become too big. We have too much time in our hands. What are we doing with that? And then we start 
looking for answers that as we as we grow older, as we grow closer to uh, living this body, living this physical world, we start questioning ourselves, what's that? What's beyond it? Is this just this? What, what's going to happen to us once we leave? And then our friends, our parents, people that are closer to us start leaving us, start going, passing. And this is part of life. It happens to everybody. There is a time where sooner or later, we'll be gone. And we were talking about this in one of our, in one of our classes, this how long does our personality live? So I was telling them, it's a big secret, but everybody will know now. So now Lena is 50. How long, if I'm really lucky, am I going to be around here? Another 50, if I'm lucky. And then I pass on. And if I'm really, really lucky, if, right, if all the angels take care of me, she will be on the other side for what, 30 years, 50 years. And then she will be born in another body, another name, another family. Lena is gone from Lena's mind. The tendencies will be there. What we learn, the love we feel for each other, that we'll take with us. But us, the body, the name. So if I'm lucky, I'll, be, I'll meet my grandchildren, great-grandchildren. Then I pass on, who will remember me? Who will remember Lena? From an old picture. Probably there won't be pictures then. So all the data will have to be downloaded in a computer. Do you think somebody will care to, <laughs> to, to look for my picture? 50 years from today? Sorry. Gone. Past. Next. Funny to think like this, isn't it? We have to let, it, let go. The app is right. We have to let go of ourselves. So in this sense, this ability to respond. Where is this taking us? How am I going to respond to that? What am I going to leave here? What is going to be my legacy? If nobody's going to remember the name, what's the point? So if we're, all, if we're all here, and the point is to love each other, it takes a long time, because we are not able to do it all at once. We have to fight first. We have to resolve all our problems that we brought from past lives. We have to try to create some new friends if we can this time. Try not to mess up too much in this, in this life. And we have to start planning for something better, I hope. Nobody wants to go worse than it is today, do you? So we have to start planning. Planning involves this ability to respond. What do I want from me? What do I want to take from here? What skills, what ability, what is making me stronger? Who in this life I came to go against and try to understand and try to get along well? We all have one. We all came with them, one, mostly in our family, mostly in our own house. We are practicing our muscles, aren't we? So we are having to, we are having to practice, practice forgiveness. We have to forgive, no? 
so we can let go. Can you imagine something that we hold on more than something that we are hurt for or somebody that we are hurt for, for, for or from? Nothing links us to another like hurt, hate, Somebody who hurt us will, will carry them for a long time. We'll carry them as a brother, we'll carry them as a parent, we'll carry them as a kid until we learn to get along. This is what we learn here. So the faster we do it, the faster our muscles will, will, get, will get stronger, right? But learn, just learn and think about it and know and, and hear about it. It doesn't, it doesn't make it stronger. We have to start practicing it. We have to bring it to our daily lives. We have to bring it to our daily choices. We have to bring it to our daily decisions. We have to make a decision to live here. And if somebody cuts us in the, on the street, we'll have to let them go with no heart. With no hate, without losing control. How many times is going to have to happen until we don't care anymore? Things will not stop happening in our lives until we learn to let go. People will not leave our lives until we learn to let go. We're going to start finding our husbands in the second husband, in the third husband, in the fourth husband. We're gonna find our boss in our second boss, third boss, fourth, fifth job, doesn't matter. Until the lesson is learned. We're gonna find our brothers, our sisters, in our friends, in our neighbors. We change, we move, and we find the same person living right next door to us until we learn the last. And if it starts repeating itself, pay attention. It's your muscle being worked on. If the words, if the, if the actions change, and this have to be it, this has to start with, with us, unfortunately. It has to start with the man in the mirror. Have you ever thought about um, going to the doctor, getting a prescription because you're not feeling well, you're feeling sick, you go to the doctor, get a prescription, and you want your husband to take it? Or you want your boss to take it? I feel a stomachache, I feel sick. Every time I talk to this person, he gets me so mad. He makes me do things that are completely out of my control. I get hurt, I hurt people, and hurt people hurt people. But I don't wanna change. He needs to get better. The other person needs to learn. The other person needs to uh, come here to the center and listen to the speeches and start studying because this should be for him or for her. He, sh he or she should be here listening to this, you know? When you want the other person to take your medication. Happens, happens more often than we think. So when these things start happening, our muscles are being worked on. Our muscle, our responses, our abilities. And every time we have a problem that we complain of, it's too much for me, why is this happening to me? Why, oh why, oh why? First of all, 
It comes because you are part of it. We are going to have to learn how to deal with it. We're going to have to deal how to fill our little virtual cups. Our tolerance, our patience, our... We're going to have to work on everything. Humility, forgiveness. How are we going to work on it? Going through situations that we have to use them, no? And once we use them enough, we feel that experience, we know how to deal with it, then next. And we're not going to be able to do it all in one life, in one lifetime. It's going to take a long time. It's taken us a long time, but we are getting, we are growing, we are going through the process. But as we go, and as we fill up, and as our ability grows, of course, it's the problems will be bigger. The resistance has to grow for our muscles to get stronger. We have to carry more weight <coughs> if we want to go, grow stronger. So when life brings us moments or situations where we think it's not possible for us to go through this, is our ability to respond that we have to change. We got to see, we got to have to look at it at another angle. We're going to have to learn something new. We're going to have to pick up some new ability in the, on the way to be able to do with this bigger problem. And as we grow, the problems disappear. As we grow, it becomes life happening. <laughs> and when we have kids, especially I think parents go through this a lot, this responsibility that we have through this, this spirits that come to us for us to watch them for a while, they're not ours. We are not supposed to keep them. They're theirs. But for a while, they come through our watch. And I think this is one of the biggest lessons, experiences that one can have. Going through um, watching their kids growing up, going through uh, learn. It's a learning experience that it's hard to describe if, you're, if, you, if you don't know what it is. But once you see your kids winning or growing over their fears, conquering things that they were afraid of the day before, going one step further, going to school by themselves, going to have their own job, conquering their own financial life, becoming spirits that are good in nature, and knowing that you have something to do with that. <coughs> oh, having kids, they're extremely problematic. It's always, always, always a, a, a constant battle with them for you to bring them, for you to talk to them, for exchanging ideas with them. And all of a sudden, you see a break. You feel a break where you can get along. When they come home and they see you know, Mom, you're right in that moment. It may, take, see, it may take years for us to do this. It may take years for us to go back to our parents and say, you know what, thank you. Thank you for what you said. Thank you for what you did. It worked out. It worked out in my life. It worked out for good. And these this responses are so important for us to not just listen to them, but for us to say it. 
and it doesn't matter, we all know here, it doesn't matter if our parents passed. We all know that they can hear us, they can listen to us, they can feel us. So it's a, it's a way of us resolving things that came through time, came through lives, bringing us here. Sometimes we hurts that we don't remember why it's there. We don't know exactly when it happened. It could be this life or another. But we all know that we are all linked together. And being able to bring these responses out is very important, not just for us, but for them as well. We are all linked together. We are all one. We all feel each other. And one resolution brings a lot of goodness in for everyone. In another way, this uh, ability to respond. Um, Emmanuel, uh, uh, Joana de Angelis is, um, um, she's a, a mentor of the house. She is uh, um, one of the mentors for, for Divaldo Franco. And she says that um, the responsibility is the, an evident acquisition, it's an evid evident manifestation of acquisition of consciousness. And this is something that we were working here all the time. Okay, so what is trying to bring to our consciousness everything that we are? Know, thy, know thyself, isn't it, that we are working on? We, we talk about um, reform, we talk about change, we talk about knowing ourselves, but at the end of the day, we are trying to bring all, all that we are to our conscious side. Right? We have so much that we don't know inside ourselves. So much that we don't remember. So much that we, we, we have in our unconscious, unconscious mind. And this is probably guiding through our lives more, most of the time more, a lot more than our consciousness. So we are trying to become more and more conscious of ourselves. So we are trying to bring these tendencies that we have every day, uh, these tendencies to be mad, at each, uh, something that triggers um, this tendency to get all excited for something that we don't know what triggers. So paying attention to these little things. Why do I get so mad? Why do I get so excited? Why does this hurt me so much? Why if they call me weak or if they call me this or that, why does it changes me so much. Sometimes it's a person. Why does this person make me so mad? Or so weak? And it, these questions, these um, journeys inside ourselves tend to bring a lot of uh, answers, a lot of strength, because once we understand, once we comprehend, we can um, we can put that in place, put that in the right place, and that will not control us anymore. And all these are things that uh, we, this, these are all themes from classes, from studies that we do here, from discussions that we have um, amongst ourselves. And, um, and I think there are a lot of uh, aha moments that I call when people learn from each other, learn from each other's experience. I've seen it happen all the time when people are talking about what happened in their lives and all of a sudden they feel like, oh, that's, that's why. Oh, that's how. Oh, this is the reason why um, I have to go through this. And the problem simply disappears. It gets into balance, it gets into understanding, it gets the comprehension that it needed. And this is also an invitation. It's an invitation for you to come. And uh, I, I think most of you guys uh, are part of the studies. 
but it's always something new. Even if we do this seven years in a row, the same thing, the same class, the same book, and we are always learning something new about ourselves. We are always um, becoming stronger in a way, in a sense of um, understanding life, understanding what's going on with us, understanding how we can affect life around us. It reflects, I think, in our spiritual life. If we are spirits having this physical experience, we have a body. We are spirits who have a body. So these changes will affect our lives, our physical lives. There's no way that our minds, once, once the mind changes, it reflects everywhere. The situation of your life may not change, but the way you see it will. The way you approach it will. The way you search for a solution will. You will see things coming at you in a different way, as a way to help you grow, as a way to help you a better person, help you become a better person. I think this is one of the biggest uh, lessons and uh, that I took here, that I've been taking here. And we talk always that if we weren't here, it would probably be, we would, our lives would probably be a big, big mess because uh, it's always, uh, it's always this search of, tr of trying to do something better with ourselves is, uh, is a reason, is, is one way of, uh, of coming here, is one way of, of achieving that, that we have. But um, Mauro is here, we have, um, we're gonna have to continue our talk and some other time. Um, again, it's an invitation for us to exchange ideas based on the on the lessons we have here from, from the Spiritism. And uh, bring, bring yourself, bring, your, bring yourselves because you are unique. You have this beautiful gift that you are. Only you can be. And um, I'm pretty sure that your experience will help tremendously <laughs> somebody else. Thank you so much. Have a good evening.